Good morning. morning. That was great. Um, I would like to invite those of you who are sitting in the far, far back who can probably barely hear my voice up here to come up a little ways. Um, We want to fill in some gaps. We have a great speaker this morning, so if you guys will, those of you who are willing, maybe all of you, just move forward a couple of rows. Come on, don't be shy, you guys. I'll have Dr. Lunsford come up here and invite you guys to come up. Then you will come up, I know. (laughs) Well, welcome to Crossroads this morning. Um, As a way of announcements, uh, I just wanted to inform you that we are going to have a men's only retreat on April the 28th. So guys, if you have your ears on and your earbuds out of your ears, um, just be aware that that is an opportunity for you to go on that trip. There's uh, a chance for 11 individuals to go on that retreat. We're going to go down to Hendersonville to Canuga Conference Center. So uh, feel free to see me after Crossroads this morning or send me an email if you can't see me right after Crossroads um, so we can talk more about that and that opportunity. The cost is only going to be $10, so uh, it's fairly cheap. And if $10 is still too much for you to be able to afford to go on this retreat, we don't want that to stop you from being able to go. So please see me after Crossroads or send me an email. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give thanks for this day that you've given us in this new season of the Christian calendar, Lord. Praise God for Easter. God, we know that he is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you for this opportunity to be in this beautiful place of worship. Help us to clear our hearts and our minds and be ready to hear a word from your servant. For it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and take your phones or other devices out and turn them on silent or turn them off even better. Uh, Homework assignments that you might be working on, you can put those away too. Uh, You don't want to miss a word from our speaker this morning, um, Reverend David Mateo. He is here uh, as an, he is an associate pastor of outreach and language ministries at the United Church of Chapel Hill. Now, while that's part of why he's here, he is also here because he is the author of Jesus Deported, um, the illegal, uh, excuse me, help me remember the, the title of the book again, the, the illegal gospel of the undocumented son of God, right? It's a long title, but an excellent book. Last night, if you missed out at the PNJ Coffee House or the PN, Peace and Justice Coffee House, you missed out on a really good discussion on immigration uh, and on his book. You missed out on a couple excerpts there. But uh, if you will, please turn your attention to uh, the gospel choir as they come and give us some special music this morning.
Today we'll be reading from John 3, 1 through 10. Había un hombre de los fariseos que se llamaba Nicodemo, un principal entre los judíos. Este vino a Jesús de noche y le dijo, Rabí, sabemos que has venido de, venido de Dios como maestro, porque nadie puede hacer estas señales que tú haces si no está, con, si no está Dios con él. Respondió Jesús y le dijo, de cierto, de cierto te digo, que el que no naciere de nuevo no puede ver el reino de Dios. Nicodemo le dijo, ¿cómo puede un hombre nacer siendo viejo? ¿Puede acaso entrar por segunda vez en el vientre de su madre y nacer? Respondió Jesús, de cierto, de cierto te digo, que el que no naciere de agua y del espíritu no puede entrar en el reino de Dios. Lo que es nacido de la carne, carne es, y lo que es nacido del espíritu, espíritu es. No te maravilles de que te dije, os es necesario nacer de nuevo. El viento sopla de donde quiere y oyes su sonido, mas ni sabes de dónde viene, ni a dónde va. Así es todo aquel que es nacido del Espíritu. Respondió Nicodemo y le dijo, ¿cómo puede hacerse esto? Respondió Jesús y le dijo, eres tú maestro de Israel y no sabes esto. Even though I know all of you understood that, I will be also reading John 3, verses 1 through 10. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Verily I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, Jesus answered, very, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of flesh is flesh and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say, said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, buenos dias. Thank you for being here. I know that people on the back wants to hide, but it's fine. Um, thank you for the invitation. I uh, appreciate the invitation to this wonderful place, it's this wonderful day. And thank you for the choir, you're amazing. Thank you so much. And the musicians, of course. Recently, we have celebrated Easter the resurrection of Christ. Today, the reading for today, of the gospel, continues with the theme of being reborn or born again. The image of the mother's womb is recurrent in different moments in the Bible, in different ways. And today, the gospel of John presents us one of the most interesting theological conversations written in the Bible between two interesting characters. In this passage, two different world visions met or meet. Two different people looking the matters of faith from different perspectives, from different windows, from different points of view. So what do you do when you have a conversation with somebody who you disagree? What do we do when we have a conversation with somebody that we do disagree? In this story, on one side we, got, we have Nicodemus, the Pharisee who likes the facts, likes the organized religion, 
And he likes the tradition, the, stru the structure, and the scripture. Nicodemus knows the law very well. But there is something that stills, still doesn't make sense to him about Jesus, about Jesus' message. Nicodemus wants to understand the kingdom of God. On the other hand, we got Jesus, a complex character, a complex individual, a complex person, someone who came out of nowhere doing things, Miracles that generally don't take place in the religious arena. Miracles that normally don't take place in the centers of religion in Jerusalem. So Jesus also likes facts. But Jesus thinks that what really matters is what do we do with those miracles, with those facts. Jesus wants Nicodemus to understand, but more importantly, Jesus wants Nicodemus to enter into the kingdom of God. For Nicodemus, the miracles are real proof, the evidence that God is with Jesus. For Jesus, the most important thing are not the miracles themselves, but the ability to understand them. The ability to read what is embedded on them. To look at the miracles and do something with his life. To change his ways of seeing his own faith journey that is entering in the kingdom of God. Of course, Nicodemus has begun to see the kingdom of God a little bit blurry. But he hasn't come out of the religious womb of his religious womb. I'll tell you a little story, a short story that happened to me. When my son David was born, I had the honor of cutting his umbilical cord. I remember that in the moment that he was, in the process of he was born, he did, he did, he did not want to get out. It was hard for him to get out of his mother's belly. I remember that I was excited telling his mother, he's coming out, he's coming out. But from the outside, I was encouraging him to come out. But he was very comfortable, very comfortable. Living and connected to an umbilical cord was easy and was very comfortable. After several hours of his mother's, of his mother pushing and pushing and sweating and all this drama, he finally come out at the right time, just in time. All of us were very happy, but he was crying. <laughs> of course, nobody wants to leave the womb of the mother. Over there, everybody's happily swimming and eating, protected, fed, and safe. Who wants to come out to this violent and insecure world full of so many difficult and selfish people? Anyways, here is Jesus speaking about Nicodemus. He is coming. He's coming, but Nicodemus doesn't want to go out from his religious womb. Nicodemus is struggling with his own ideas, with his theological frame, with his traditions, with his, in his mind, with his mindset. He doesn't know what to do. He wants to go out, but he likes to be in. He likes to be under the protection of the religious system. He wants to be under the protection of his own beliefs. Nicodemus is struggling, but he knows that something out there is calling him. 
What the writer of John is trying to tell us is that seeing and understand and understanding about God's miracles is important, but not everything should remain there in that level. We must enter into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is surprised to see the things that God does, but he is still looking at them from the chairs as somebody who watches a football game from the stands in secret because he doesn't want to be associated with something outside his belief system. It's not true that sometimes we are like him. We don't want to be associated with Christ in some ways. We like the idea of Christ. We like his message. But there's some moments that we don't want to be related to him. We like to be called Christians, but we have a hard time acting like Christians. Jesus wants Nicodemus to stop the game of hiding by going out where everyone can see him. In my journey as a pastor, many times, I've seen and found many Nicodemus through the way, through the road. They are sure that God's presence is, is moving and making miracles around them and in others. But they like the secret. They want to be, they want to remain being spectators. I've seen people witnessing miracles happening among the LGBTQ people. I've seen people witnessing miracles among the black and the Latino communities. They know the conversations about racism, marginalization, oppression, and all of these terms in the social justice language, but they don't want to be associated with them. They like the Black Matters movement, but they want to keep that distance. They heard about the DACA kids, children, but they're not interested in knowing what happened to them. They know about Jesus' mission of liberating the captives and give freedom to those who are prisoners of an oppressive system, but they do nothing. They do nothing. They don't want to leave their comfort zone. They sneak around. Some of us like, some of us like the idea of God's love. We are very passionate. We know that God has something to, with, to do with the marginalized. God has something to do with the oppressed. But again, we twist the situation to our benefits. We miss the target again. We want the kingdom of God be something about us. When it's an invitation to born again, again for the sake of others. Why is it so hard for us to get out of the comfort zone? Why is it so hard for us to get out, to be in the same, in the womb? Adam and Eve is the perfect example of this image of the womb. They were in the garden, happy, having everything. They didn't have to work. Everything was there. They got a fruit, sure. They got a big one, something, sure. God was providing everything. But life puts them in a position where they have to make a decision. Or we can stay in the comfort zone, or we can go out of here. Of course, we will cry. The world outside is not so easy, but it's a decision that as a humans we do all the time. To be in the comfort zone is not the place where God wants us to be. Life and God is pushing us all the time to go out and do something with our faith, with our life. A few months ago, a friend of mine, a pastor, good friend, visited me at my house. He told me that he got a message from God for me. He said to me, David, I understand that God is love. And he's a pastor, okay? I understand that God is love, that we must love our neighbor and all that. He said, 
I appreciate and admire the social, work, the social justice work you do among illegals, gays, and people with addictions, but I think you are sending people to hell. Or, he said, are you going to tell me that Jesus wasn't an illegal alien, a drug addict, or a gay? After listening carefully what he was saying, I remember Nicodemus. He likes God, the God talking about God's love. He likes to talk about church. He likes to talk about, you're welcome here. We are a church, got a place in the table. He likes to talk about all this language of Christianity that we have made to make feel, people feel good. But he didn't like the idea of entering in the kingdom of God. He can see the miracles happening among these people. He likes the idea of loving God, but under his conditions. We like the idea of a, God, a loving God, but under our conditions. My friend needed a revelation, a revelation of the love, the love of God. He needed maybe to burn again. My friends, there are things in our spiritual journey where understanding is not enough. There are things where our Christian faith, love, compassion, and care don't make sense. We need to have the experience to love our neighbor. One must experience that neighbor. Loving our neighbor is to listen to our neighbor's stories, to respect our neighbor's traditions to avoid the selfish idea of saving, saving them by destroying what they are. Our faith, our faith is not a faith that comes in a manual of procedures. Our faith is a living experience. It's an organic relationship based on love, peace, and justice. We are in the kingdom of God because we have accept, accepted the challenge of born again. If we claim to have the Christian faith as part of our system of values, if we claim that we have born again, we must be willing to left aside our privileges, to sacrifice our comfort zone, and to take care for those who are victim of Victims of our unjust system that keeps them in social and in spiritual prisons. We don't like being called racist. Nobody likes it. But as long as we do nothing meaningful about it, it seems like we cannot be Christians and tolerate racism at the same time. We don't like when people call us religious, and now we call ourselves spiritual, not religious. But if our religion, but if our spirituality does, does not make any difference in the ecology, the minorities, the less privileged and the poor, well, it seems like we are still in the womb. Very comfortable, very comfortable practicing an irrelevant faith. Jesus invites us to leave the womb, to born again. The story invites us to be protagonists, not only to understand about the miracles happening to people. This story invites us to rejoice, to become part of miracles happening on others. This story invites us not only to understand about injustices happening to others, it invites us to advocate for them, to be like one of them. It invites us not, not only to understand about health services for the poorest, but it invites us to send letters, to call our representatives, to join a committee, to be cause and to be effect. It invites us to understand about discrimination against different people, but also invites us to walk in their shoes, to be a compassionate and to do something about it. This morning, 
I hope we leave this place as leaving our spiritual womb, as getting out from this place of the womb. Out there, many are waiting for us, saying, it's coming, it's coming. We can stay here as we are, very comfortable in the, in the womb of our mother church, of our mother religion, of our mother spirituality, or we can go out and do, and do something meaningful with it. We have to, to burn again, as in the movie, The Mad Matrix. You can take the blue or the red deal. It's a choice. And you can stay comfortable or you can get out. The apostle said, the apostle Paul said, said it very clearly. For the kingdom of God depends not on talk, but on moral power. Amen. Let us pray. God, we want, we want to born again. We want to be witnesses of peace, witnesses of justice. We want to get out of our comfort zone and bring your love to this world that is needing us. We want to bring your justice to the marginalized, to the oppressed, and to the causeway. Help us to understand, but more importantly, Help us to invest our lives for the sake of others as Jesus did. Amen.
So brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand up for a moment. Thank you. May the spirit of peace and love fill your hearts. Get out of the womb and go. Go outside. Make mistakes. Learn from life. Change the world. Love your neighbor. In the name of Christ. Amen.